Never learn. Never learn. You know, it's so, it's so interesting to now hear him sing. He can sing, actually. He can sing. He just can't play guitar or shit because he doesn't know to do it. It's kind of like when, when, remember when Manson went to prison when he had his oh, for sure. Manson party? That's when he actually became famous. He really wanted to be part of, uh, what was it, the Beach Boys? He used to kick it with the Beach Boys. Remember? Man, Charlie Manson. He is friends, was friends with one of the brothers. And what happened was. This, this can't be true. No, this serious, is hilarious. Look it up. He was, and he um would go to their house and he, and I guess because he was getting too high, they kicked <laughs> his butt out and he lied and said he used to. <laughs> Charlie ride. don't surf. Charles Manson meets the Beach Boys. <laughs> Told you. Keep telling me though. So point being, he. Oh my God. Got enraged because he was an inspiring guitarist he wanted to be a musician right and he traveled to california his mother was a prostitute and you know he had a destitute life so when he went out to california he was he was destined to be a famous guitarist and then for some weird reason he ran into the beach boys ended up befriending one of the beach boys and what made it even more um the murders more prolific and what got him more famous and attracted all the other serial killers was he knew where all the heiresses and rich people in Hollywood live. Because remember when he did the fa- the Manson family murders, the reason why it's so famous, he killed the Folgers, uh, the, the Folgers heiress, and he killed Folgers Sharon. Coffee. Yes. Oh it, shit! That was what I did not the know that. Heiress, and killed Sharon Tate, and she was eight months pregnant. Yeah. Roman Polanski was the only one that made it, and it was some other heirs that were there at that house. Right. So, it was some big names. Yeah. And it was just horrific. And that's why he even, and he got, he had more money in prison than he ever had in his life because he had so many fans. Right. He had people donate money. He had movies all just sitting in prison. So I feel like if they ever did something like that, I feel it'll make the crazies come out more. Well, you know, I was just trying to solve a problem there, but never mind. <laughs> if, it, if it works, because you know what, when I played the game, I play as a first person shooter game, yeah. we get knives and stuff. And it's so crazy because we, there's 25, no, 24 people in total in the game. It's, it's you and two other people yeah. trying to kill three more other people, which is a total of 24, right? But when I watch how these people play, it makes a lot of sense because their mannerisms is off the wall. Like they'll jump away from tower and they'll come and stab you in the neck or they'll blow you up or they'll pop you from there. And it's like when they come back, they get so aggressive if you kill them <laughs> to where they'll start finding out where you live. I had one contact me, uh, sitting inboxing my friends. No way. I'm serious. I ain't gonna say her name because I don't want to give her any glory. But yeah, I had to put her in her place. I can, well, I can find the message and read what I told her. I said, "Look, because you were fucking them up on the game." Yeah, she like found me. Like I guess she thought I was a punk. I said, "Girl, I even, I even stalked her. I found her actual address and told her I'd be there the next day and act like I bought a plane ticket." She stopped saying stuff to me. I swear, that's crazy. People don't know Grace. They gonna get. They gonna. Uh, y'all see that bruised hair? Hi, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, um. <laughs> so switch it, switching uh, <laughs> subjects very quickly. So look, I, I didn't even know this about Charles Manson. Yeah, and the Beach Boys. You did not know that. No, not at all. So check this out. Mm-hmm. Never learn not to love is a song recorded by the American rock band Beach Boys that was issued as the B side to their "Bluebirds Over the Mountain" single. I don't remember either of these songs. Mm-hmm. Credited by Dennis Wilson, the song was an altered version of "Cease to Exist." written by the cult leader Charles Manson. Manson Mm. wrote his version of the song specifically for the Beach Boys to record, and his lyrics were meant to address personal tensions he had witnessed between Dennis and his brothers Brian and Carl, Mm -hmm. which were a part of the Beach Boys, right? Brian Wilson. Mm -hmm. Manson did not participate in the recording of Never Learn Not to Love, held at the Beach Boys private studio in September 68, he originally demoed his song to be played on acoustic guitar, but the band changed some of the music by expanding the arrangement and structure. In addition, the lyrics were altered, much to Manson's indignation. By Dennis's account, Manson voluntarily exchanged his official writing credit for a sum of cash and a motorcycle. Hmm. Conversely, the engineer, Stephen Desper, said that the band omitted Manson's credit as retribution for his thievery. Manson did not mind the changes to the music, but was incensed by the reworked reworked lyrics, which created a rift between him and Dennis. Mm -hmm. In February 69, an extended edition of Never Never Learn Not to Love. Can you read that now? Mm -hmm. 
was included on the Beach Boys album 2020. The band also performed the song during a 69 appearance on the Michael Douglas show. In August, members of Manson's cult, the Manson family, committed several murders and were apprehended shortly thereafter. Wow. The recording of Manson's original version of Cease to Exist appeared on his debut album, Lie, The Love and Terror Cult. He's got an album? Why are we not listening to this? Well, you want to know what the bigger question is. Why was the Beach Boys hanging around him? Right. What? How does this... They all were doing drugs. I can tell you the story. You know, there's like so many conspiracies around Charles Manson, right? And you you probably know them all, Mm -hmm. right? I'm not... My brother would know more about it just because like he's interested in all these... Mm -hmm. Because when you get it, you know you're a good storyteller when you can see how conspiracies add up. Mm -hmm. When you meet somebody who's like... Nah, the government didn't shoot JFK. Mm-hmm. You're like, you don't do much thinking, do no. you? No, they don't. Like, you just like, everything's rainbows, unicorns, sunshine, the government leprechauns. Like that. No, no. That's like, okay, for example, we got to go back a little bit in time with the Beach Boys. Yeah. You know, at this point, they were living off of loans from future record labels because you got to remember Surface, Surfer USA... All their hits, um, Daddy t- took the T-Bird away. Right. His daddy Such sold a good song. all their masters. Uh, every song that was their biggest hits in the early 50s yeah. for $700,000. They get no royalties. They get no rights. When he sold all that, when they performed them songs, they could never get paid for it. So they had to go another route. And the only big hit after that was Kokomo released in the 80s. Interesting. You can't find nothing past when they were all together. Hmm. Because I think one of them ended up, if I'm not mistaken, writing Star Trek or had something to do with Star Trek. What? He was Hare Krishna, I think. One of them was Hare Krishna and had something to do with Star Harry Trek. Hare Krishna? Mm-hmm. They're of the religion, you mean? Yes. If you want to, you can look it up. But I know that's, I don't know if it was Dennis, I forgot which one it was, but it was one of them. And they had wrote, co-wrote Star Trek or something like that. Oh my gosh. Charles Manson's music. Yeah. There go Arkansas, I'm... number six. <laughs> have, you, have you listened to this? No. Home is where you're happy? Home is where you happy. Shit. Where's the don't, uh, Where's the song that we... What's that new? What was the we were looking for? I know when I'll see it. Let me see. Look at your, no, it's not that one. Terror of Tears, something, the love and terror of tears. No, cease, the exit, something, cease, the exit or something. Cease to exist. Cease to exist. All right. All right, where's it at here? Cease to exist Just come and say you love me He was on LSD Cause he's trapped If you go back He's all off tune But his voice Give is Give up your world You're in trash Come on you can't be Why you think they add the music on top of him? Go back to the beginning You can hear him playing I'm your kind he, He's all off And his voice is good your kind And they I add that psychedelic see. music to the Walk on, walk on. I love you, pretty girl. My life is yours, and you can have my world. Never had a lesson I ever learned, but I know we all get our turn. I love you. Never learn not to love you. Hmm. Submission is a gift. Go on, give it to your brother. Love and understanding is for one another. I'm your kind. I'm your kind. I'm your brother. I never had a lesson I ever learned. But I know we all get our turn And I love you Never learn not to love you Never learn not to love you You know, it's, it's, so, it's so interesting to now hear him sing. He can sing, actually. He can sing. He just can't play guitar or shit. Because <laughs> in the beginning, boy, he was a, like one of them cousins that couldn't. Like, he's right. all, so they had to add that psychedelic to cover up his. But, like, that was kind of like part of the music, though. Of course. That psychedelic movement was kind of like a little little mm-hmm. offbeat, I mm-hmm. guess. And kind of like 
playing with like structures of songs, right? Because you're, the structure in your head is deteriorated, oh. right? Because of the LSD you're on. Like that was the whole point. Like mm-hmm. when you take psychedelics, like it's like, oh, okay, well this. This desk ain't really a desk, bro. It's just wood, bro. Invisible wood. <laughs> but wood is energy. Energy is good energy. 